Let's go back to the beginning. The Humble Iron Node. Today's setting for the Beginner's Guide to Smart Plating. Hey, get off my Iron Node, bro. I'm trying to make smart plating. For today's video, we're gonna take this normal Iron Node and build out for one assembler's worth of smart plating, giving you two smart plating per minute. Run that thing and you will have enough smart plating and 25 minutes to send up the space elevator. Let's go. Just a quick note on today's video, I am gonna use my hover pack today to give us a better angle for the video. But other than that, I'm gonna use only items that you would have at this point in the game when you'd be working on smart plating and nothing from the awesome shop. Let's get to it. So what we're gonna do first is get our miner going on this iron node and I'm gonna actually cover it with foundation. And if you aren't building with foundations, step number one, start building with foundations. Step number two, now you know you can cover up nodes with foundation so you can line up your miners. So you can put it down and make a square. And if you don't know this, you can hit control and it will line up your foundations with the world grid that goes across the entire world. So if you do that, then you can line up everything together. And I just like to do this, put my foundations down so I can get my miner lined up a little bit. So as you see, it doesn't actually line up perfectly. It's kind of in between the found squares and the foundation. That's okay, better than nothing. We'll put it there. So we need to lay out our foundations to make our grid to, so we can have an organized factory. So I'm gonna build it over here in this big open area. You can see there's a little bit of a hill. So we'll just go to the highest point in this hill, hit control again, put it on the world grid. And then we're gonna go five this way, five this way, and then we'll go right up to the railroad track here, seven. And we'll just fill this in. Okay, we get our platform set up. Let's connect the power to our miner here get that fired up as I said this is a normal iron ore node so we're gonna get 60 per minute here all right 60 iron ore per minute and we only need about 46 iron ore per minute for this build so this should be more than enough so we have our 8 by 10 grid here where we can lay out our smart plating factory one of the first things when you're planning out a factory like this how much do I build what should I do? How many machines? Do I use all the ore? All that type of thing. What I like to do is figure out the end first and work back from there. And so in this case, I said we need 46 iron ore for this factory and this output 60. So many beginners were like, oh, that's inefficient. This is outputting 60 and I'm only gonna use 46. Well, once you play the game for you a little bit, especially in iron, you realize that the nodes are almost unlimited. It's very difficult to use all the iron nodes and you shouldn't really be too worried about not utilizing every piece of ore that you pull out of the ground. That is my tip uh, for a beginner. All right, so let's get our assembler out here and get ready for our smart plate. And we're gonna put it right here on the edge, right here in the middle, and then build towards that. All right, let's take a look at our assembler here. All right, so uh, never mind all these alternate recipes. So our smart plating needs two reinforced iron plates per minute and two rotors per minute. One assembler makes five reinforced iron plates per minute and an assembler makes four rotors per minute. So we just need one assembler of each. Let's get those down. But we might as well just hook up the inputs while we have these. So if you want 90 degree bends in your belt, which I like and it's a good look to keep it organized, bring your belt to line up with your input that you want and then just go back two like that and then you'll get a nice 90 degree bend like that let's do the same thing on this side go back there back to 90 degree okay there we go let's set these up so this one is for rotors and this one is for reinforced iron plates so we need two reinforced iron plates per minute two rotors per minute and this machine makes five so if you need a little help with the math you can go down here to the target production rate, type in two, then you say 40%. So you need 40% of these values coming in to make two per minute. So 40% of 30 is 12, and 40% of 
of 60 is 24. So this machine needs 12 iron plates and 24 screws to work at that capacity. Same thing over here. So this isn't hard since it's 50%, but type in your two 50%. This needs 10 iron rods and 50 screws per minute to put out two rotors. So if you'll notice both machines need screws, one needs iron rods and one needs iron plates. So let's work back from there. So we need 50 screws per minute here and we need 24 per here. So we need 74 screws per minute. So we'll need just two constructors worth of screws. So we need two constructors worth of screws. And since both of these machines need screws, we'll do our screws in the middle here so we can easily distribute those to each machine. And we'll do our iron rods on this side because this machine needs iron rods and we'll do our iron plates on this side. And also one of the tricky parts that we have here is if we're gonna use Mark One belts, which I'm forcing myself to here, they can carry 60 screws per minute, but we need 74. That's more than one belt can hold. So we need to do a little trickeration here to get this going. This machine takes 50. This machine makes 40. So we'll send all of this to this machine and then part of this machine to this machine. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a merger right here. And you'll see in a minute why we're making a merger. And then here we're going to make a splitter. And I'll explain why in just a second, but let's get these belts hooked up. When you get them really close to the machine like this, don't forget you have to put a little belt in here. Okay, and then this one is gonna go into this machine. We want a right angle, so go there, one, two. Right angle, beautiful. And then same with this machine, this is gonna go into this machine. So get there, one, two. Beautiful. So this is gonna take in 40 screws from here, and then it's gonna split them two ways. 20 to this machine here, and then 20 that direction into this belt and it will merge with the 40 from this machine. So this in theory would put 60 down this side, filling up this belt. This only needs 50, so we'll end up feeding 50 that way. This machine needs 24. This is taking 40 and splitting it two ways, 20 and 20. So won't this machine be four short per minute? Well, it would be, but this is gonna back up because we're gonna send 60 this way, it only needs 50. And eventually it will back up into this splitter. And then when this output is full, it will send everything off here to the right. So eventually this will balance out. This will be getting 50 and this will be getting its 24. Easy as that. No crazy load balancers needed. So let's figure out our math again here, all right? So this makes 40, so we know we need 10 iron rods per minute here. We need 74, so we need this to output 34 per minute, 85. So we need eight and a half iron rods here. So we need 18.5 iron rods per minute for our screws. We also need iron rods for this. We need 10 iron rods per minute. Remember, we're doing 50%. So we need 28.5 iron rods per minute. So this makes 15 iron rods per minute. So that means we need two constructors worth of iron rods. So since we need 28.5 and these would make 30 if we had them fired up all the way, we can just use one Mark One belt for this. We don't have to worry too much. This one takes 10 per minute. This one takes 18.5 per minute. So we can just merge these. So a simple way to do this is actually just use a splitter right here. And then we'll use a merger kind of like we did last time right here, but we want our output going off to the right over here towards our screw machines. All right, and again, don't forget your little belts in here if you're gonna have them that be that close. But this guy's gonna go into here. We're gonna make this a little bit better. I'm gonna make this as short as possible, like that. And then this guy's gonna take the other splitter into this merger. And then here, we're gonna make splitters to split this off, to make a tiny little manifold right here. So we'll hook up our splitters to our machines and our splitters here. 
So this will make 28.5 and send 10 to the rotor machine and send 18.5 to the screw machines. So you may be thinking, Dr. Lucrate, what are you talking about? This thing is going to split off seven and a half iron rods for this. That's not enough for 10. Well, that's not true. It's not always going to split off seven and a half. Once this side fills up, which it will, it will send everything down this path. And if you have the right amount of outputs coming into the system, you'll have the right going out. It will balance itself across the splitters and the mergers, which you'll see when we turn this all on. Okay, let's get back to our reinforced iron plates. So our reinforced iron plates, it's 40% of this. We need 12 iron plates per minute. So let's see how many constructors we need to make 12 iron plates per minute. Just one, easy enough. So let's get this guy lined up here in line that output beautiful easy as can be here run this straight in there let's hook up our power as we go here so we don't forget now we need to figure out how much iron we need really one way you can do it if you don't care about using just a tiny amount of extra power is make enough smelters to use all 60 iron ore Per minute so i think we'll just do that that's easy enough for me i think i'm going to add another row here on just so i have a little bit more room to work with it's a little bit too spread out compared to what i thought all right so 30 iron ore makes 30 iron ingots so let's get out our two smelters to use up all the iron ore coming from this node so let's just put these here like this going this way It'll make it a little bit easier for, our, for us to make a little manifold. So what we'll do here is just to make a tiny little two machine manifold. Put our splitters here. In the middle, we, I'm gonna have my input come in this way into our manifold because we'll be bringing our iron ore over into this machine here to get the whole process started. We'll just hook this up. Our input will come in here and split off and then evenly feed both machines. We'll do the same thing here in the back and collect their outputs. We'll make a little merger here and have our output go this way towards this machine. So that will collect the output of both smelter then what we need to do is take the output of the smelter 60 iron ingots per minute and then spread it across this iron plate constructor and these two iron rod constructors and we will make another little manifold across here for these machines so we'll run this over here and split it off to this iron ore machine first and then we'll bring it over across here and get the input matched up the splitter like this and then hook up the machines and the splitters to each other then we'll hook this one up to here remember go line it up bring it back to and that will give you the 90 degree bend all right let's make sure we have our recipe in here And then let's get these hooked up to the power. But let's get the input of the ore in here, get the power flipped on, and uh, we will be in business. That's not quite 90 degrees. That's pretty good. We could lay foundations the whole way. But you know, we don't have to be perfect. We're just starting the game out. Even then, I got a couple wonky corners even in my best factory. I have to say, this is the first thing I've put on a Mark I belt in quite some time. I'm used to Mark V belts and this is just comically slow. I normally don't have to talk this long and fill. I'm like a radio DJ 
when the music system goes out and you just have to keep talking to fill up the time. Hey, how about the weather out there? Nice and sunny, huh? It's like the sloth. Whatever Disney movie that was, it had a sloth. But it's iron ore. All right, so our iron ore is in our smelter. Once we turn everything on, we'll get this all filled up. And I promise, even though we didn't make a bunch of load balancers and split it off perfectly, this will give us two smart plating per minute. It's gonna be great. All right, so let's turn on the power, my favorite part. And one of the things I like to do is actually challenge myself to hook everything up right uh, and then flip the power on and see if I did it. Uh, and again, this is a test right here. Let's do it. Smart plating. Vamos. All right, that's a good sign. Smoke, smoke belching from the smelters. Filling up with iron ore. This guy as well. All right, here's our first victims. So you'll see one here go into our iron plate machine. And then every other one will be split off towards our iron rods until this fills up. So this is gonna take a little while to all fill up. So we'll watch a little bit here in a little time lapse. See you on the flip side. And then of course, let's check our smart plating machine. We already have 18. We're almost to our goal already. We're running at 80% capacity, not too bad. Soon to be 100. Another thing you can do if you wanna be really efficient with your power, I know at this point when you're doing this, you're on biomass power. And one of the good things about making a smart plating factory is that you can get to coal as fast as possible. So if you're trying to save power, what you can do is underclock these machines to make the amount that you need. And when you underclock these things down, a normal assembler uses 15 megawatts of power. When you underclock it to 40%, it only uses three and a half megawatts. So it's a big savings if you're light on power. If you underclock every machine to the level, to the exact amount of production that it needs to make two smart plating per minute, you'll only use 49 megawatts of power for this entire setup really not too much at all. I think that's less than one biomass burner uh, worth of power. It's pretty good at this point in the game because this is really the last thing you do before you get to go set up coal power. So there you go. Dr. Luke Crate's beginner's guide to smart plating. So will leave you with enough smart plating to put it up the space elevator in just 25 minutes. Efficiently using the iron from one normal iron node. Some might say you don't need to automate this, just hand feed the machine. And that's a fine approach at this point in the game. But if you do automate this, you will use smart plating in phase two. And you can put it into the awesome sink and it's a pretty good source of awesome points early in the game. So you can unlock some of the things that make your factory a little bit easier. Conveyor wall holes, doors, power wall outlets, etc. So for me, I think it's a good idea to automate these uh, space elevator parts when you can. So what are you waiting for? Get out of here. Take your smart plating to the space elevator and hit the button, pull the lever, send it up into space. But on your way there, stop real quick, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next videos coming up. And until then, I'm Dr. Loot Crate and stay stoked out there.